Okay, it's a bit noisy here, but um, this is the church that my mum and dad were married in, so I thought it's a good start uh, to this video. But I'm actually going to reverse the shot now, so you don't see my ugly mug. Today we'll have a walk down Labrook Grove, which starts here at the Harrow Road and continues all the way to Holland Park Avenue. And in between we'll be doing a bit of history, see a few buildings and see what comes up on the way. Harrow Road goes that way towards Paddington and Kilburn Lane is up there and that's St John's Church where my mum and dad were married. So this is quite an interesting corner politically because straight over the road there is the London Borough of Brent and then over there it's Westminster you can see the sign where West Westminster begins and this corner um, is the northernmost part of the bloody hell it's noisy the London borough of Kensington and Chelsea I've got a picture of my uh, dad and his mates uh, sitting outside the plough and the plough was the oldest building in North Kensington so we can do a few pictures of the plough as it used to be On today's walk, we're going to walk the length of Labrook Grove. This is very much the insalubrious end of Labrook Grove. It gets much posher, hillier a bit later. But politically, as I said, this is an interesting area because over the road there used to be Chelsea, not Paddington, not Queen's Park Estate but a detached part of the parish of Chelsea before 1900. Um, and that's quite an interesting political arrangement. There's a little, a little blob of Chelsea in the middle of nowhere, but it caused um, Hensel Newtown to be developed uh, on Chelsea land. Let's uh, talk about that later. And I think actually it's so noisy here. I think voiceover boy is gonna take over because I think it's windy and noisy and uh, I think we need a little less racket. Labrook Grove wasn't always um, such a maelstrom of traffic. In fact, uh, Labrook Grove wasn't always here. Let's just bring up a, a map from at the very beginning of the 19th century, the 1800 map of the area. Um, actually, we'll just zoom in a sec. That's better. So you can now see the plough in uh, where we were just standing outside um, on the Harrow Road. This is top left of the map. Um, just beside that big square building. Um, the Harrow Road goes through fields, there's uh, nothing along it really. Um, you can see Orms Green just off the edge of the right hand of the map. In 1810 we can see something has changed in the 1810 map that the um, Grand Junction Canal has been built. But that's the only difference between 1810 and the map from the decade before. Let's move forward 40 years to the 1850s map. So, strikingly, it's the same area as we had before. Um, the plough is still at the top left of the map. But um, the Harrow Road has got a bit built up at the very top left. We've got a, a, got a, a road name which, was, which has gone out of business, Elizabeth Place. We can see the beginnings of the Kensal Green Cemetery, where it says Chapel. The canal runs across the scene from left to right. But south of uh, the canal and north of the railway, we have a new piece of suburb called Kensal Newtown. This was built on the detached uh, piece of Chelsea. Um, the Chelsea, the, the detached piece of Chelsea ran either side of the Harrow Road. Uh, north of the Harrow Road, it's still fields. South of the Harrow Road, we have Kensal Newtown. There are a few things we can spot on this map that the road running north to meet the uh, Harrow Road at Elizabeth Place is not called Labrador Grove, it's Portobello Lane. Or, but it's called Portobello Lane before it became Portobello Road. So the name Portobello Lane as was stretched all the way across the northern end of Labrador Grove. 
Uh, Kensal Road, you can see, uh, originally was called Albert Road, not Kensal Road at all. And Kensal Newtown was a pretty grim area serving the Western Gasworks between the railway and the canal. Uh, there's no Hickney steps. There was a ferry um, across the canal to the Harrow Road, um, which charged uh, Hickney. So that's uh, the reason the Hickney steps are called the Hickney steps. It replaced a ferry um, that charged a Hickney toll. Let's move forward 10 years again. So it's the 1860s now. Kensal Road has settled down to the name Kensal Road. Albert Road has gone. Um, and uh, we can see the streets of uh, Kensal Town a bit clearer. Uh, West Row, Middle Row, East Row and Southern Row. Now this uh, map is a lot better at showing um, the edge, the southern edge of Kensal Newtown, which exactly followed the boundary of Chelsea detached. So there's no Adair Road, there's no um, Appleford Road, uh, Bosworth Road, it's all not there yet. Um, by the way, um, some people call it Adair Road uh, and Adair Tower. Not me. Adair. Adair Road. My nan lived there. So Harrow Road still stretches across the top of the map and where it still says on this map Chelsea detached, um, the Queen's Park Estate will eventually be built in the next um, in the next decade after this map. I think in the 1870s the Queen's Park Estate arrived again exactly on Chelsea land. Um, it just stretched up to the dotted line the, uh, on the right where it, see where it says Chelsea, the A of Chelsea, there's a little road running north and then there's a dotted line that is the political boundary of Chelsea and not Chelsea. Interestingly, this map doesn't show Labrick Grove or uh, Portobello Lane as well as the 1850s map. Um, it does cross the railway. Um, there is a building missing on this, which um, was the, the pub which was nicknamed the Cowshed, um, where the R of Great Western uh, is on the map. Um, that predated uh, a lot of the development uh, of the area uh, because it's where drovers would rest their cattle uh, coming into town from the north uh, along Portobello Lane uh, but it's uh, not on this map uh, it should be so let's um, briefly go to the 1890s map it's not a, a well known map this one but um, let's have a look at it just showing this because um, where it says Kentle Green is the Queen's Park Estate we've moved on another 30 years from the map we just saw um, and we can see that in 30 years the urbanisation of the area has gone mad. Also you can see the original Kensal House um, which was a, a, a mansion um, built just north of the canal um, and just east of the plough. Um, you can see it uh, marked on this map. Barby Road is called Edinburgh Road um, just down where Barby Road is uh, past the cowshed area. Uh, what else can we see on this map? No, I think uh, it's quite a nice map. Uh, lots of named roads. South Road became Southern Road in time, but not, not, not yet. And briefly we can have a look at the 1900 map. Um, and brown shows industry. Um, in purple are churches. Uh, in sort of a, a, a sort of a mauve colour, pinky mauve colour are schools. And uh, Anyway, you can see that the uh, urbanisation of the area has carried on the piece. So even though it's one of these bland modern buildings, it's quite nice that they call that Victoria Wharf because that was the site of a pub called, well, latterly the Victoria. Um, no, sorry, not latterly. Uh, at the beginning it was called the Victoria and then it was called the Narrow Boat and it um, was positioned where Labrick Grove meets the cut, the Grand Union Canal, which was laid out or cut, I think you say, in 19 1901? No, 1801. Let's just get across the road here. We can dodge some traffic. So we're looking at the site of the narrow boat pub, uh, which are just um, 
Nick's in a photo of this here. This is how it used to be, and there was actually a staircase down to the river from the uh, from Lava Grove. And as we mentioned earlier, there was a mansion called Kensal House, which is still there, that white building with the chimneys. It's not the uh, one down Lava Grove that you can see these days. Well, it is the same one, but uh, di same, different building, same name. And then you can see the Flora Pub right at the end on the left, and the Hackney Steps Bridge. So interestingly, we still get to call this area North Kentington, despite the uh, rebranding of Myriad Estate Agents. So we're now coming down to Kensal Road. This building on the right is the old pub called the Western Arms, um, or the remains of it. I'm not sure what is going to happen to it, but I see the building is still standing. Uh, let's listen to an interview um, from about 2010. Uh, yes, I first started using the, the Western Arms um, at the age of, what, 17 and a half, 18 years old, in the mid-1940s. Um, one of the benefits I had was the fact that I could play piano, and I usually played the um, part of the pub pianist. Um, this brought its benefits in terms of a, a fair amount of free beer supplied by customers and the people behind the bar for doing gratitude for my services and at the end of the evening um, usually um, it was a custom for somebody to what they call pass the hat round where somebody's hat or cap was used to collect money from people in the bar who had enjoyed singing during the course of the evening and um, in appreciation for the pub pianist. Um, another benefit, whilst we're on that subject, was the fact that quite often at half past ten when the pub shut, um, men decided they hadn't yet had enough to drink and they would club together to buy beer from over the bar to take away with them. <clears throat> that meant adjourning to somebody's house to drink the beer, etc. And usually that house had a piano. And if they didn't have anybody there that played the piano, which was quite normal, um, I would be invited along to play the piano for them so that they continued the festivities in somebody's house. So that was one half of the, um, the story. Um, the other half of the story is the actual pub itself. It was a very popular pub by virtue of its beer. They used to sell a dark, mild beer which was always served quite cold from the, the pub cellar. And I found out um, in later years that the Gaslight and Coke company opposite in Dudford Grove um, supplied gas to Kensal Newtown by way of a large mains gas pipe which ran alongside the pub cellar under the ground. <clears throat> and by the, the physics of the gas expanding as it passed along the pipe um, this dropped the temperature because of the expanding gases and hence had one of the early forms of refrigeration on the pub cellar um, hence the beer was always served at a quite low temperature and of excellent tasting quality So we're staring at the site of what used to be the gas works that used to dominate this area.
there's one last vestige of uh, Victorian mansions, which seems to be this brickwork, which uh, and the archway seems to have survived the course of time. And there, there are the stairs down to uh, Southern Row, Octavia House, and some Roger Main photographs. did not used to run north on its uh, current trajectory. Portobello Lane ran north at this point to meet the plough, as we saw earlier. Uh, so Lubbock Grove did not exist. It was just a rural lane called Portobello Lane until this bridge was built over the Great Western Railway, uh, I think in the 1840s. And it's made by James Bartle and Sons, who uh, made a lot of grating and ironwork. And they're actually, well, they were based uh, quite near uh, Rillington Place of, uh, and that's another story. But Goulburn Road Bridge, which I'll see if I can poke you over the top. Can't actually see what I was uh, showing you there. But uh, that was another of the uh, Bartle Iron Bridges. Admiral Blake pub, known locally as the Cow Shed. time Portobello Road um, joined Labbert Grove at this point but in post-war estates came along and that was the end of the Portobello Road Labbert Grove um, connection but I'm, I've heard that um, it's going to be restored at some point but I assume Norman Butler House is going to have to go if they did that Cheverton Street, uh, which did survive the uh, um, bulldozer, which came along in 1950 or so. But again, I'm going to mix some photos in because there's some amazing photos taken by uh, the Royal Borough of Kensington. Yeah, I was going to say and Chelsea, but in 1950 it was just the Royal Borough of Kensington. And they captured the streets here um, just before um, they demolished them and built these, this estate here. So Treverton Street survived and there was a street, um, I'm angling the camera slightly over the road here because uh, there's a, a turning there called Bruce Crow, Bruce Close uh, and that's the, um, almost matches the line of Rackham Street um, which is, uh, well it was bombed in 1940 or 41, I'm not sure which and then they uh, took the opportunity to knock everything down because it was classed as semi-slum and they built this estate with Bruce Close but if I can get here, oh you can see down Bruce Close you can see um, ah, no, what's it? Oh, I'm going to mix in the name of that I, I keep calling it St Giles Mission or something but it's not but it's at the end of uh, St Giles Square on the corner of Exmoor Street down there but this was the line of Rackham Street and around about here, um, the 
borough of Kensington took a took a fabulous photo of this view. Eagle, one, one of many pubs which really, Kensal Town was, uh, was full of pubs, this being the last one, unfortunately. We saw the western site earlier, uh, but this is still going, which is uh, kind of nice. It's got a bit trendy inside. Now we're at the end of uh, Telford Road. Um, this uh, this set of roads was called the Scientist Estate. Um, so we have Terrellford here, and the next turning is Faraday. Again, people who still call this area North Kensington, which it is, not Notting Hill, that's later. So just down there is Portobello Road, um, not the uh, end where the mar most of the market is, it's uh, quite residential this end of it, and then just peters out at the moment. just focusing on this church because it's uh, a beautiful and b it's because uh, my aunt and uncle uh, were married there nice place I've actually forgotten what it's called so let's go around the front and see what they say it's called well I assume they say it's called it is called St. Michael and all angels, all angels, St. Michael and all angels. And there's another old classic uh, ex North Kensington pub, but I see it's um, supposedly a hotel. Yeah, it's, it's got the um, Trappings are still open, I guess, after the pandemic. So there's starting to be a uh, distinct change of mood now. It's gone a bit more upmarket. I can say many more cyclists, but that's a, a Deliveroo driver. Uh, some cyclists on the pavement. So just briefly we have Oxford, Oxford Gardens which uh, runs parallel with Cambridge Gardens just down there which is a uh, it says a lack of naming uh, ideas for a start but I bet someone can prove me wrong and say oh it's not to do with a uh, lack of names it's because someone from Oxford All Souls owned the estate or something right I'm just going to find number 160 which is just here on the left which is where my mum and dad first set up home I think they're on the third floor up there but uh, it was very much a dive when they uh, they lived there uh, in the late 50s
down Cambridge Gardens you have some some of the um, street food market around the top of Portobello Road we're not going there today so 1969 came the Westway which uh, was part of the London box which never got finished but it's meant to completely uh, in so called London with a series of uh, motorways the car used to rule and the Westway was on the last sorry not the last bits but the only bits got built the northern bit of the Blackwall Tunnel is another bit that got built the 8102M as was and the reason uh, it was built along this line was because the Metropolitan Railway had enough land um, beside it to even a hundred years after that was built to put a motorway in without too much further demolition but further along the um, further along the uh, railway Ackland Road area um, things did get better tight for space right I'm going to cross the road here Rather weirdly, I think ahead, that's Tom Vake um, vaping outside a pub or smoking outside a pub. It does look like him, so I'm going to put you down and uh, say hello to him. Might talk to him in the course of events. I was just doing the uh, Labour Grow video and I spotted you in the scene. <laughs> How are you doing? Okay. Yeah. Are you, are you actually doing? Yeah, I'm doing history of our uh, Labour Grove from end to end. Selection of photos now, aren't they? Yeah. But there's also Aswad up the stairs. Where's Aswad? Back up around the corner. You clash in pistols, local connections, but but those pictures aren't aren't particularly um, local. Was it Ray? Yeah, London calling was actually Roy Elton. That's a, a, quite an obscure, but uh, I can't believe that. Yeah, kind of a place that we did this at first. Uh, we call it kind of ge generic um, of. Uh, uh, but I, I was a bit critical of uh, what do you call it? The, this kind of photo history they do. It's all right, actually. It's getting better, all right. But with, but with the Tom Jones. Well, Tom Jones thing, was here, wasn't he? Yes, and I, I don't know. Well, you can't really get any information. The, 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 the Tom Jones thing is that there's also, sorry, there's also some photos that I don't Sorry. And you got the clash there as well. But the clash there as well. Yeah, but if you want to say that I, I'm not familiar with that um, with that photo. I am with a photo session, sorry. Um this is a, 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 of the clash um those in under the west way. Yeah, that is under the yeah, west way, isn't it? It's a bit cold yeah. in here. Yeah. I haven't been in here since there uh, was uh, um, well, a kind of community activism thing, saving the library. That's when you were last up here, was it? 
Yeah, when there was some library uh, event, or at the time of the Grand Court Fire, when it was uh, um, it was closed down. But before Vince, no, after after Vince, uh, but he he'd started doing um, gigs up here. And th th this was um, it was a theatre place in the eighties, but uh, yet yeah, the old regulars from the sixties, um, there, there wasn't anything going on before. I, I think it, it, it was not music-wise. Yeah, it wasn't even really. Uh, um, skiffle pub entertainment. It was just serious drinking in uh, um, location venue. Um, but that was it. We've been started. Uh, then, then it was uh, famous, notorious Irish bar. In a way, Vince Power saved the KPH and made it a music venue. He, he put on some um, uh, great um, gigs here. Lawrence Gladstone was a 1920s author who wrote about this area. And the book was uh, Notting Hill in Bygone Days. And it's quite a definitive work on the area. And um, you have some information maybe that the uh, Oxford Road, Holland Park Avenue um, was a Roman settlement. Um, is that correct? Yeah, I want to go back to, um, the, back, really back to the start and I've, I've got all my, the, the, um, most of my information comes from Florence Gladstone. Uh, say that from bygone days although um, yeah the, 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 the local history bible um, that, she, she, she's she's got um uh her information from the, the sort of victorian 18th century historians bit, bit before and all um discussing more there the, 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 there's the florence gladstone scrapbook of local studies that, goes into it even more. There's accounts of um, uh, the, 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 the first kind of account of any um, human act activity of, um, to, to, uh, of during the, in the beginning of the building development. Um, and some, whilst workmen were digging the foundations of uh, one, one Labrick Square right by Kensington Park, the big um, communal gardens uh, at the top of the hill, the start of Labrick Road from Holland Park Avenue, the, the workmen discovered uh, a stone sarcophagus and established to be Roman. Here's a map from about 1800. There's a, just, it's just a very rural area. We've got two farms on, on the go. We have a Notting Barnes farm, which is roughly where St. Mark's Road is now. That, that sort of roundabout at the end of St. Mark's Road. And that's where Notting Barnes farm was. And on Portobello Road near the uh, later um, convent is Portobello farm. So Portobello Farm is owned by the Talbot sisters. And moving the map south a bit, um, we can still see Notting Barnes Farm off the top of this one now. Uh, we have a whole rural area where uh, the Labrook lands were. Um, but uh, until uh, well into the 19th century, this was completely rural. And finally, we've got an 1840s map showing the Kensington Hippodrome, which was a uh, race course um, which lasted, um, when did it last, from uh, 
1837 to 1842. This was an unsuccessful venture, which we'll cover at another time because there's a fascinating story. The, the uh, race course went bust in uh, the early 1840s, and the lands were then developed by the uh, Ladbrook family. James Weller Ladbrook and his family developed um, the land underneath the Hippodrome. The, the Talbots turn up at some point in the 18th century. The Labrooks have already got you know, sort of Labrook planning, the main one, James Weller Labrook, starts the building development, the race course side. That when the, the Talbot, the, just the last sort of Talbot descendants, Georgina and Charlotte, sell it off, includes Portobello Farm. Talbot, the Talbot land gets sold, sold off, and then there's the other, a little bit later, Talbot connection, where something like the 23rd Earl of um, Shrewsbury, their main title, the motoring of Shrewsbury Talbot starts up motoring activity up Barbie Road, the routes um, became Talbot and Talbot car and all that. Mm. Is that on, on the Ordnance the Survey map? The KB, KPH there on the 1860s map. Um, and there's the Elgin on that corner. I think the KPH maybe isn't on that map. But there's only a few, there's a few houses going up from the Elgin. Well, I think 1860s was like ground zero for this area, wasn't it? Because once the railway came, it just went exploding north. Yeah. Yeah. Really quickly, it's been established that there was um, houses were built beyond the Westway by then. But on that map, there's still a kind of, um, you know, kind of buffer zone of unfinished plots here. From, from that first, uh, first photo, from, from the 1860s, where it's uh, the, 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 the pretty newly built, maybe just uh, just about to open Kensington Park Hotel, um, where um, Florence Gasson says that you can still see hayfields through the, um, the railway bridge, and, um, and there's uh, that Ordnance Survey map that uh, from the 1860s, 70s early 70s where um, the area is built up up to the railway line as it is today but beyond the railway line it, it, it is completely rural it's just just the two farms Port Bell and Nottingham Barnes. I'm gonna leave the pub past the library and go up the hill what am I gonna see what interesting things will I uh, find up Lab the rest of Labrook Grove? That there was some um, a, a, a circus at one point, and, the, the, and this is not that long after the Hippodrome race course, over to the west, not far away from here, um, Clarendon Road, Portland Road was the straight of the, of, of, of the race course. But, but here, just, just up Labrick Grove, Cornwall Crescent, um, was the site of a, of a circus, a, a prize fighter. <laughs> Name's gone. Uh, no, Sayers, Tom Sayers. Prize fighter Tom Sayers. He had a, he was running a, a circus. Well. And a boxing booth named Jem Mace. Of, um, there's some kind of, the, 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 this area, from um, the type of, of the Hippodrome, it was also used for fair entertainment. And other parts of the area had a, a, a hot air balloon ascents over towards Bayswater as well as the, um, the Hippodrome site. So time has moved on, dusk is falling and we're going to continue our walk 
up um, the hill of Labbert Grove. Over there is the local library. Down Labrook Crescent here, you can clearly see Grenfell Tower. So this is the Elgin, or as my family used to call it, the Elgin. We used to call everything um, that actually is pronounced Elgin, Elgin for some reason, just a family thing. But uh, this is one of the great uh, pubs of Labbert Grove and it's still going, unlike some of the others. This is Cornwall Crescent and this is, this is where uh, Tom was talking about the circus that uh, um, seems to have been set up in uh, um, just before the building all happened. Here we can see the communal gardens that uh, James Weller Ladbrook um, set up. Uh, he was a, a great one for huge sweeping vistas and um, um, it's like a, gar a garden city before garden cities were invented really. So this is the first exit of Lansdowne Crescent. Um, there's a the next road ending will uh, come across along up going up the hill. There's the second exit of Lansdowne Crescent. But um, one of the things about uh, this road is that it followed the contours and the the, the racing course of the, the course of the old race course, the Hippodrome. And there's some very nice, uh, very expensive houses along here. St John's Church um, was the centrepiece of the uh, Ludbrook estate. It was, uh, it was built right at the uh, almost the brow of the hill that uh, uh, Ludbrook Grove sweeps down from. Built in 1845. Um, it was not only the high point of the uh, Ludbrook estate but the, also the high point of the Kensington Hippodrome. Kensington Hippodrome Kensington Hippodrome was a race course uh, well started in 1837 on just countryside um, by a guy called John White um, that's uh, W-H-Y-T-E um, and the first meeting took place in 1837 um, the Hippodrome wasn't a great success um, one of the major problems with it was that um, um, the potteries which later became Notting Dale, but uh, the Potteries was a, a dirt poor area of uh, ex-brickworks and uh, and where p 
pigs were kept, so called the piggeries as well as uh, the potteries. Um, and there was a footpath, public right of way, that led from um, the, the pottery, Notting Dale, up to Notting Hill. And uh, by building the race course, the foot park was uh, closed off. The footpath was closed off, and there was a great legal hoo ha about rights of access. And eventually, John White diverted the footpath, but uh, it was a bit too late for the Hippodrome because uh, it, it caused a lot of controversy, and the, the people who uh, White was trying to attract to the Hippodrome um, didn't really want to mix with poor people. Over the road here is the um, Notting Hill Police Station. It's on the corner of uh, Labrick Road, one of the many roads called Labrick around here. So this is Labrook Walk. So there's a nice view over there and another one uh, this way, which is uh, sort of an unnamed bit of road. And over there is um, an American food store, which uh, I used to find it was the only place that sold diet A&W &W root beer, which I was uh, in love with for a while. And up ahead is a uh, Holland Park Avenue, here's the Mitre, and we've reached the end of our walk. Hope you enjoyed it.